Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to put a simple search button on your forms so your users can search for records by a single field with one click. Today's question comes from Reese from St. Paul, Minnesota, a Silver member. Reese asks, the people who work in my office aren't computer experts. I'm trying to make a database as simple as possible for them to use. Do you have any tips for creating a real simple search or find button they can click on to find a record? All of those ribbon and right-click commands can be overwhelming, especially for non-computer people. Yeah, I know what you mean, Reese. If, uh, if someone who doesn't really know Access or even Microsoft Office well looks at the ribbon, it can be extremely overwhelming. Usually what I do for those people is I hide the ribbon and then I just give them their own search tools right on the form they have to use. Let me show you how to make, I'll show you two different ways to make a button. One, we'll use the button wizard. There's a real simple find tool that might be good enough for you. If not, I'll show you another slightly more complicated way, but it gives you a better result in the end. All right, grab yourself a copy of my customer template. It's part of the blank template package you can get from my website absolutely free of charge. You will find a link in the description down below the video where you can download it. It's basically got a couple of basic forms and a simple customer table with a few records in it. Now the customer form opens up like this. There's the customer form. And you can see I got first name, last name, email, and your basic fields. And yeah, even though there's a big find button right here, sometimes people just see all these buttons and go nuts. So usually what I'll do on their system is, is just minimize the ribbon. You can just double click on one of these commands up here and it maximizes or minimizes the ribbon. And of course, hide their navigation pane. I cover how to do all this in VBA code in my more advanced lessons. That way all they see is a nice pretty interface like this. Now, for you and me, the developer, let's open that stuff back up. Let's put a find button on the form. Now first, let's go to design view. There is a command button wizard that does a single find button. All right, so find the command buttons here. Click on your form somewhere. The wizard starts up. Pick record navigation, find record. Next, pick whatever you want, binoculars or the text find record, whatever. The binoculars are fine. Next, give the button a meaningful name like find record button or whatever you want to call it. And then finish. So here's your button. Now this button's going to work for all of the fields. So I'm going to shrink it up a little bit and put it right there. All right, save that. Now, when the user goes into the form, there's a little bit of training involved. All you have to do is tell them, if you want to search on a particular field, click on that field first, then click on the find button. So if I want to search by last name, click on last name first, then click on the find button. It'll open the find and replace dialog, ask you what you want to find, current field, whole field, all this, the basic find dialog box, the same thing pretty much that you'd get by clicking up here, okay? Again, sometimes for some users, this could be overwhelming. So I can show you how to do a real simple find box that's specific to each field that you want them to find records based on, but it's going to involve a couple of lines of VB code. It's not hard. For you, the developer, there's a little bit of setup time, but for your end users, it's going to be the simplest possible solution without any extraneous prompts and, and options and buttons and combo boxes and so on. So let's go back to design view, get rid of that button, delete it, goodbye. All right, we're going to make a button that's specific to each field. So if they want to search on first name, we'll have a search name search button right there. Last name, search button right there. I've found that this is the easiest and best solution for beginner newbie computer users. It just works easy for them. I build it in my databases all the time. So leave a little bit of space here. All right, now find the command button again, drop it right here. This time, cancel the wizard. We're going to make our own button, okay? Uh, you can just put find in here for now. We'll replace it with an icon in a minute. Now, shrink it up a little bit. Stick it right here. Okay. Let's give this button a good name. Double click on it. Go to all. Let's call this guy uh, search first name button. That's the name of the button. Okay. Now let's put the picture in it now. Uh, picture right here. Go to picture where it says none and click the dot 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 button and then whatever you want in here um you can use the binoculars do we get the binoculars let's see right there binoculars hit okay and there you go there's your little binoculars all right shrink that button up a little bit make it fit right in that spot okay good enough 
And basically, you'll put one of these for each field that you want to search on. Because usually, typically, there's only two or three fields in here that your people are normally going to search on. They're going to search on last name. They're going to search on first name, maybe email address and phone number, possibly address. All right, the rest of the stuff they're not going to search on, usually. All right, you can put as many on here as you want or, you know, just the two or three that they use the most often and then tell them, okay, if you need to search on more than that, well, we need to learn how to use the, you know, this guy. Okay. All right, so let's put the code in this button. Now, if you've never done any programming in VBA, Visual Basic, I have another video called Intro to Access VBA. You'll find a link down below in the description below the video. Click on that. Watch that first if you've never done any programming before. But we're going to right-click on this guy, go to Build Event. If you're asked what kind of builder that you want, pick Code Builder. I have that option set to Always On. And I'll show you how to do that in that video. All right, now right in here, this is the button that's going to run when we click on that button, the code that's going to run when we click on that button, okay? So first, we need a temporary variable to store some information that the user is going to provide. All right, so I'm going to say dim s as a string, okay? I've made a variable called s. All right, now i got to ask the user for that value s. So s equals input box. Input box, it basically puts... A box up on the screen, kind of like a message box where you can click on OK and cancel, but this actually prompts the user to type something in. All right. I don't have a tech help video for input box. I'm going to make one. It's on my list for the future. I do cover input box a lot in my regular VBA classes. All right. First is the prompt. What do you want the prompt the user for? So we're going to prompt them for please enter first name. Okay. Then a title optionally on top. So first name. All right. Then you can give it a default value. Now, since I'm searching on first name, why don't we default it to whatever the first name is on the current record, right? So just put in here first name. That's the first name field. Now, the rest of those options there, X pose, Y pose, you can control where the box goes. We don't need all that. So close that up. Okay. So S equals input box. Let's just message box it back and see what we got right now. Message box S. Let's just see what the button does at this point. Okay. So close that. Open it back up again. Click my find button. Okay. I got my message, my input box up here. There's the prompt. Please enter first name. There's the title. And there's the default value, which is what's in there right now. See that? I put first name in there. And you could change it. This I'm assuming they're looking for other Richards. But, of course, you can come in here and type in Joe. Okay. Hit OK. And now it popped up Joe. That's what we told it to do. I just message box at this point. All right. Let's go back to the editor. Get rid of that message box. Now, the first thing I want to handle is if they click cancel or if they don't return anything. So if S is equal to an empty string, then exit sub. Okay, an empty string means what they did was they either clicked on cancel or they hit OK with nothing in that box. Those That will return empty strings in both of those cases. Okay, now to do the actual search, what I like to do, I don't like to use the find and move next commands because you can find a record... You know, it'll leave all the records in the form, and then it'll find the first one. Then you can click on Find Next, Find Next, Find Next to go through them. I don't like doing that. I like to apply a filter. What that does is it filters the records so the only ones you will see in the form now will be the ones that match your search criteria. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say me.filter. That is the filter for the current form equals, and then in here you put inequality. So you'd say, for example, first name equals and then s is a string so i got to make sure i enclose it inside of double quotes so it's got to look like this double quote quote and s and quote 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 i know that's confusing basically these double quotes get converted into a double quote inside of that string so if s is joe that's going to look like this then first name equals joe okay that will be inside of this string. So it's first name, those double quotes go in there, then the S, which is Joe, then another double quote at the end. I have a video that explains what the deal was what the deal is with these double double quotes. They are confusing, but you need to know them to use string concatenation. You can use single quotes in place of double quotes like this. But I don't recommend using them with names because you can't have names, especially last names, with hyphens in them. Or, excuse me, with apostrophes in them. And that throws that search off. So trust me, do it like this. 
All right, that'll say first name equals Joe. Okay. I just put a link in the description down below under the links section that'll take you to a video I have called concatenation. Putting these strings together like this is called concatenation. All right, uh, merging multiple strings together. And it, it better explains this whole double double quote thing. Okay, a lot of people ask me that. I know it's confusing. I cover it in my beginner classes. And people are always like, what? So I made a separate video just on that topic. All right, now that I've set the filter, what the filter property is, now I have to turn the filter on. So now I say me.filter on equals true. That activates the filter. Okay, save it. Let's come back over here. Click on my button. There's my first name input box. Richard is the default. I'll hit OK. All right. It created a filter that said first name equals Richard. And now down here it says one of one filtered. Okay, and, and any Richards that you have in here will now show up. Let me turn the filter off by clicking on that button. Let's cheat and make a second Richard. Let me turn uh, Jean-Luc Picard into Richard Picard. All right, now I'll come back over here to the beginning. And again, I'll do a search. Click on that button. First name Richard. Hit OK. And now it should say one of two. There are two Richards in here. Okay, so that's how you do a search by applying a filter. Now all you have to teach the user is click on the search button that you want and then when you're done, if you want to go back to all the records, just turn the filter off. That's much easier than teaching them how to use this thing. Okay? Now if you want to get a little more complicated, usually when you're doing a search, you want to search for part of a name or part of a phone number or part of an address. Okay, you don't want to have to be able to type in the whole thing. You might, not, you might want everybody whose name starts with Rich, like that. So for that, we have to use wildcards. Okay, wildcards look like this. For example, if you've, got, if you've got first name equals Richard, like that, that's an exact match. All right, but if you say first name like, and then put a star like that, and Richard then it, it has to begin with any number of characters and end with rich, like good rich, for example. Okay, if you put a star at the end, then that can be begin with rich and end with any characters you want. Okay, if you want it on both ends, you can do that too. So put two stars on there. I don't have a wildcard tech help video. Let me see, let me check my list real quick. Yeah, I don't have a tech help video for that either, for the like keyword doing wildcard searches. I cover it in depth in my classes. I cover wildcard searches and the like keyword in my Access Beginner 5 class. And the input box function is covered in Access Expert Level 32. I will put links to those classes in the description down below. I'm going to be making a tech help video on both of those topics eventually. It's on my list. Not sure how soon I'll get to it. Keep an eye open for it. It could be a little while, though. That list is pretty long. It's about 500 people on the list right now. All right, so we need to basically put this inside of here. So we got to put those little stars, little asterisks, right inside of that, that set of double quotes. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be there and there. All right, so it's going to be, it's going to be double quote inside of here, right? A star, then rich, then the star, and then the, uh, the closing double quote for out here. I know it's confusing. I, I didn't... I didn't invent the system. I'm just teaching you how it works. But this will give you the easiest possible solution for your end user. Okay. Now that this is in place, let's save it. Go back over here and see how it works. Click. I'll just type in RIC. Go. And nothing happened. <laughs> what did I do? Well, I goofed. I forgot. I just noticed it. I forgot to change the equal sign to a like. You have to use the like keyword. All right. So you got to put your asterisks in there and use like. Yeah, I goof up, too, from time to time. I was too busy talking about, to you about other classes and stuff and tech help videos. I forgot to put the like in there. All right, here we go. Let's try it again. Ready? Click. R-I-C. Go. Boom. There's two. All right, now this could be just, this could be Rick Picard. Uh, you don't want it capitalized, right? Rick Picard. All right, close that. Save changes, sure. Open it back up again. Search. R-I-C. All right, it got me and... This one, Rick Picard. Okay. Want to do the same thing for last name? Come in here, design view. Make some room. Copy this button. Copy, paste. Slide it right in there. Open it up. 
change the name. What do we call this one? We call this one search, uh, search first name button. All right, I'll copy that, and we'll call this guy search last name button. Okay, right click on it, build event, just copy this code right here, copy and paste. Usually I don't like duplicating my code, but this isn't that big of a deal. Just change this to last name. You got a bunch of places where you got to change it to. So last name, the default here, last name. And then in here, last name. Okay, if I was going to make 30 of these, then yeah, I, I, I would want to duplicate that. Let me get rid of some of this extra space in here. Save it. Close it. Come back out here. Open it up. And now let's search for just an R in the last name. Go. All right, there's one there. Kirk. It looks like everybody's got an R. All right, let's do, let's search for R-O. Search. R-O. Go. All right, there's me and Troy, and that's it. All right, see how easy that is? Now you know how to put a search button next to any field you want. If you want to learn more about making these search buttons in the extended cut for my silver members and up, I cover making buttons to search ranges of values for numeric and date fields. So, for example, family size, customer sense, credit limit, all those things. You'll get two prompts this time, enter a start date and an end date, or enter you know, minimum value, maximum value, and so on. Then I'll show you how to apply a filter using the between keyword so we can search between two values. That's in the extended cut for members. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.